Hey, nice to see you. This is episode number three from my Lost Ark survival guide for new players. In the previous two, we discussed your very first steps in the game, how to boost up to end game and uh, free stuff that you can take advantage of. Then we talked about choosing the right class for you. Both of those linked in the description below if you want to watch. And today I'm going to walk you through the end game in Lost Ark, what you can do when you reach there, what's important and what's not. The good news is that there are a lot of things that you have access to at Endgame in Lost Ark. The bad news is that there are a lot of things that you have access to at Endgame in Lost Ark. Generally speaking, everything you do gives you something. From the obvious good stuff like gold and honing materials to the tiniest little annoying rune that you really want so your class can function properly. I'm assuming you're in Punica or beyond with an item level of 13 or 2 or above. Here's the deal. Daily quest, Chaos Dungeons, Guardian Raids. That's your daily holy trinity. Best dailies are the ones that reward you 4 leapstones. Second best are the low pang dailies that give you silver. It's easier to finish them if you have at least 3 bifrost slots. Boom, talk, deliver, next. You also get these points that gather to a max of 70 and reset every Wednesday. Super important to max out and get all of your UNAS tokens. These you can exchange with gold boxes at the gold merchant in every major town. Only buy the 500 token gold box, no other. Chaos Dungeons are super cool content, it's solo, gets you honing materials, amulets for skill tripods, a bit of gems and entrance tickets to the cube and boss rush. The higher your item level, the more mats you get, but also amulet and accessory grade raises. You get uh, two Chaos Dungeons, two Chaos Dungeon runs per day per character, but can over farm them for tokens that can be used at the NPC next door. You don't want to over farm as it is a complete waste of time. There's a rest bonus system available. Every Chaos Dungeon run not done gives you half a bar the next day after reset. Every full bar means double the loot on your next run. It's a loss overall, but hey, better with rest bonuses than divorced in real life, if that's the case, right? Um, Guardian Raids is you versus one boss. Again, two per day per character, but you can enter as many times as you want over that. The main reward here are the tradable leapstones, which you can sell for gold on the broker or send to any of your characters that need them. Other rewards include a chance of uh, good accessories and uh, the rune. Rune which, once you get it, you have it forever for all of your characters to use. This is a matchmaking content, especially for you, uh, the new player. Important note on the Guardian Raids, once you get to Kungelanium, so item level 1460 or higher, people actually expect you to use battle items. Uh, let me explain. Look at this group, for example. They want to do two runs, thus the 2x, and they also type their FPPC. That means that they want the person who gets number one in their party order uh, throws a flare to spot the guardian. The person who gets number two throws a pheromone bomb, number three a pheromone bomb, and the last person, number four, throws a corrosive bomb. So depending on what party number you get, that's the consumable that you need to use. Next we have some early tier three content called Abyssal Dungeons, matchmaking content as you pass by item levels 1325 to 1370. Um, and it rewards you with uh, materials to craft your first legendary set that replaces your blue 1302 gear um, and upon honing this legendary set it takes you to item level 1445. At that point you exchange it further with a relic but more on that uh, in another video. There is also a thing called the Abyss Raid Argos which you unlock at item level 1370. You should use the party finder for this one and hope for the best, basically. Alternatively, you can buy a run, it's called Bussing in Lost Ark, and there's uh, no shame in it, none whatsoever. I sometimes buy a spot for my ults, someone else carries me, and sometimes I am the driver, so the person who carries other people. Good for you to do as a new player because it gives you gold and also materials to craft your legendary set of gear that works exactly the same way as the one from the Oreha dungeons like we mentioned. 
Next we have the Holy Grail of Lost Ark. They are called the Legion Raids. The thing you're, you're busting your ass for every day. The place you want to be, the content you want to do all day long because it's so fun and challenging and exciting. Legion Raids start at item level 1415 with normal mode Valtan, then 1430 for normal Vikas, and as you progress with your gear, you unlock hard modes for each and more raids overall. Super cool content and I'm thrilled, I'm actually thrilled that you're gonna go and experience it as well. The main reward from here is gold at the end of each gate. Every character can earn gold from three different raids every week, up to a total of six characters per server. This is the most important and stable gold income in game and it's the thing that drives players to create six characters at least that can each enter three raids and get this gold reward. For example, at item level 1430, you will get gold from Argos, Valtan and Vikas. At item level 1475, you lose access to Argos, but open up Kakuseido. There are other valuable rewards, such as legendary engraving books, stones of chaos and materials to craft your relic set. The one I mentioned replaces your legendary from Oreha or, or Argos. Uh, this one, the ability to craft it begins when you hit item level 1445. Legion raids are a find party content. Watching videos and reading a guide is super important too. There are raid wipe mechanics in every Legion raid. So if you don't do something right, sometimes it can just wipe the whole thing. Now, so far we've covered all of the bread and butter in Lost Ark, the big stuff. I'd like to add a few more things that you can do. Weekly quests, I prefer these three because they are easy and get passively done as you're doing other content. Boss rush runs are amazing. Probably my favorite content in the game. You get gems, you get leap stones and a lot of combat and roster XP here. However, it's not guaranteed that you're gonna be able to do them every week simply because the tickets to enter the boss rush are dropped as a random drop from Chaos Dungeons. So obviously the more Chaos Dungeons you do and you also have to get lucky, uh, the more of these tickets you can have and as I talk, told you about the dailies, my three favorite ones, um, two of them depend on me having a ticket for boss rush for each, right? So it, sometimes it's hit or miss, but still really nice content to do. The cube is uh, a little bit more tedious and the main reward here is silver, but also luck materials for your honing. Make sure to wait until you have three tickets and use them all three at once after you match make for it. Luckily for us, in the near future, the boss rush and the cube will be combined into one dungeon with mixed rewards from both. Weekly challenge content should be done the moment you hit Punica. It's once a week per server, so you choose a character on your on your on your on that server, and that's the character you're gonna do it with. Matchmaking for both challenge guardians and challenge abyss dungeons. Guardians give you honing mats, including tradable leaf stones, while abyss dungeons give you the chance to drop a legendary card pack for which a veteran player is going to bid tens of thousands of gold if the pack is right. So you just being there, finishing the content, uh, mildly getting carried maybe, um, and dropping this legendary card pack is actually a big W for you since there's gonna be another player who's gonna bid big bucks and the gold that he bids gets distributed to the other three players that have lost the bid. So it's basically just free gold if you get lucky. Chaos Gate is an event I never miss and neither should you if possible. Make sure to exchange your Chaos Shards with tier three map boxes from this NPC in major towns. Chaos Gates at the end of you fighting several bosses drops you a random map, map that can be um, blue, purple or legendary and then after that you will get together with three other people that have the same grade of map that you have. Um, they are generally in LFG saying that they have a map and they're looking for a group, so should you. You should link your map in area chat and uh, expect for someone to invite you. At the end of that run you get tradable bags of honor shards which gives you a lot of gold if you sell them. Medea and Slime Siege events are another two I do religiously because of the gems mostly. These are island PvP events so you as a new player are just gonna get trampled uh, but it doesn't matter because uh, if you win or lose the the core rewards are the same. Ghost ship? Uh, I don't know I, I mean not the biggest of deals in Lost Ark, however, as I told you at the beginning, 
everything can can give you something nice from the ghost ship you can drop a legendary engraving book that you can sell on the auction house for some gold but the more important reward or the reward that maybe more people are looking for long term is the card that can potentially drop from here which is part of a card set that you that you're gonna need in like a year from now don't bother with it if you just don't have time especially you as a new player you have so many other more important things to do before you spend 20 minutes on a ghost ship uh, such as get roster level so you can actually get into a Vikas group uh, another event that's kind of eh, or like on the fence are like world bosses Sure, again, they can drop you some nice things. And for example, if you need like a collectible, such as an Omium Star, to get eventually that, that wealth rune for your class because it needs it. In that case, sure, do it. But otherwise, you know, it's going there, waiting for the boss to spawn, being there early so you can catch a good channel. And uh, it's a little bit of a waste of time from a new player's perspective. Gathering and crafting gets you gold if you sell the materials. But if I were you, I would work on my strongholds farm and just harvest once every two days. These stronghold farm materials are untradeable, unlike the ones you can gather out in the open world. So you can only create stuff that you can use or any character on your server uh, through the roster warehouse can use from these materials but at least you're not wasting your energy of life if you want to level up a profession you choose one in between fishing archaeology and hunting and then you can have another one profession of your choice in between foraging lumbering and mining i mean you can have all the professions but choosing one of these two categories assures that you can craft some battle items from the foraging lumbering and mining and you can also have materials sometimes or have a profession leveled up to craft honing materials through mats gathered from fishing excavating archaeology or um, or hunting and lastly horizontal content in lost ark and hold up before you stop the video because obviously you don't care about this nonsense uh, you know, rapport system, achievements, dandelions and stuff. You're just here to slay and kill it in legion raids. You ain't getting into any legion raids with a roster level of 52, okay? So horizontal content in Lost Ark helps your character, um, you know, your character profile sort of take shape. But not only that, it also gives you things that you really care about. You don't have to go full crazy 17 hours a day doing your collectibles. This is not something that should burn you out. For example, as a new player, I would definitely look into the Giant Hearts. That's a series of collectibles that gives you a lot of skill point potions. I would look into the Omium Stars, also a skill point potion there. Um, I would look into my first 20 Island Souls from islands around the world and I would also look into maybe some adventure tome, some map completion to get some of the zones like East Lutera or Punica to the completion percentage that gives me this particular skill point potion. Runes is another thing that nobody sees but you can feel it on some of the classes that actually need some of these uh, runes to function for the for their builds to actually function the wealth rune legendary wealth is acquired again through omium stars um, there is a epic wealth that is acquired from um, um, sea bounties so these are a couple of things that maybe you know in your free time you would look at these collectibles and remember to open them up and see hey i have an hour now what should i do should i do a bit of punica map completion should i do a little bit of uh, maybe do something for my omium stars or whatnot i think eventually later down the road you won't regret it and a quick note on roster level and roster xp gain is that even though horizontal content gives you a lot of roster xp it's limited you can only do it once right stuff that gives you roster xp on a daily or a weekly basis is playing more characters this is how you get to reach a very high roster level everything you do on a daily and weekly basis on each character gives you a bit of roster level and eventually it all adds up like boss rush runs uh, daily quests uh, legion raids the tower dungeon for example doing both tier one and two of the tower dungeon on all the characters you have available uh, gives you a lot of roster levels finishing the story in various endgame zones manually as opposed to boosting through it um, is also a very valuable asset that's why i never recommend anyone to purchase a south Vern power pass even though it puts you a little bit further ahead it completes the south Vern story for you but without any roster xp 
However, it just takes a couple of hours to go through the South Bend story yourself at item level 1340. And you can do that on your main, second character, third character, fourth character, and keep getting the goodies and the roster XP. And I'm going to leave you with a note on the community that you're going to be playing with in Lost Ark. And the fact that maybe not everyone's going to want to play with you. Maybe you're going to get rejected from many groups as you apply to them simply because if someone is way ahead of you they don't necessarily trust that you know things you know mechanics you're gonna do good you're not gonna be there the reason why people sort of want to play with the best possible applicant in lost ark is simply because of what i already explained which is the many characters on a daily and weekly basis rotation if i have six or seven or eight characters to play on a daily basis i really don't necessarily have time every day to spend four to five hours with someone that's brand new in a raid until they learn it happens the same in every other game i've played at least a good example would be guild wars 2 which is one of the friendliest communities that I have met and even so I couldn't get into any raids because I couldn't link them that material that you get from completing the raids enough of it for them to take me. The solution for gatekeeping in Lost Ark or getting to do content sooner is exactly the same as it is in every other game including Guild Wars 2. Join a guild, you make friends and you practice, you take a little bit of time and have some patience until your character your gems, your engravings, your roster level, your stats, get to be at an acceptable level for you to join pugs and uh, really not just ruin their runs, but instead have fun with them. That's, uh, that's uh, what I wanted to uh, mention in today's video. I wish you have a good time in Lost Ark. In the last case scenario, if you need help, if you cannot find a group for a raid one week, Come on over to my Twitch. I stream uh, every week and we play with the viewers very often. Well, I mean, except except you, if you play like a Reaper or, or, or a Deadeye. But other than that, or a Berserker and, and the Soul Fist. Those are not okay either. Okay, listen, if you play an Arcanist, a Gun Lancer or a Deathblade, come on over and let's play together, okay? Twitch.tv forward slash Cyphosan. I'm going to wait you there until my next video. I wish you lots of fun. Good luck and see you really soon.